Second Chronicles 32. We're going to learn another thing again today about pride. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah, Sennacherib, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other. All other. So there were more than just Sennacherib. And guided them on every side. And it's funny how Sennacherib has this guy come, you know, your God is not greater than our God. We defeat all the guys. And the guy is killed in the image of his God. And his God couldn't say, turn around, your sons are going to kill you. <laughs> what kind of God is that? And many brought gifts. This would be the surrounding nations. Unto the Lord to Jerusalem. Now those... They brought gifts to God. <laughs> Man, you got a mighty God there. Just wiped out that guy who's been conquering all these nations. And he came ac across the God of Jerusalem, and boom, he's dead. Uh, we better worship that God. You better believe capital punishment and the wrath of God and the judgment of God will get some people right. Maybe not the person they're dealing with, but somebody in the crowd. Somebody will watch someone get a beating and like, you know, I better not do that. And presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah. So gifts came to the Lord and those gifts would be animals. Presents would be gold, silver. King of Judah, so that he was magnified, lifted up, looked to more. That's a problem. In the sight of all nations from thenceforth. So God and Hezekiah, they're the thing. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to death. Terminal condition. Whatever, actually we do know what it is. It's a boil. And the boil we read about in Second Kings. And we read about Isaiah, Lord, when we get to that. It's a boil. They, they got figs, but this boil... Is able to kill Hezekiah. And prayed unto the Lord. That's what you ought to do. Asa went to the doctors. The woman who bled for 12 years went to the doctors. Hezekiah went to the Lord. And then they came up with medicine. Now it's not like you don't do medicine. Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. God gave him medicine with faith. Jesus said, they that hold me, not a physician, but they that are sick. And when we come to sicknesses, we not go run to the doctor first. Let's run to God first. And let's seek God's guidance. Let's seek God to help that physician. To help you. And he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. And that sign, the shadow of ten degrees, went back or forward. I forget which one it was. But the sun moved time. On the sundial. And the Babylonians are going to show up like, what just happened in the heavens? We're looking at the heavens one day and it just went, oh. And there was no time machine involved. There was no, but there was a time, is there a time machine in the Bible? Yes, there is. Hezekiah. There's a time machine, the time that Joshua, Joshua said, said, Lord, I need help. And Lord, stop the sun and stop the moon. And that time frame of Joshua, and it's been recorded by People who do astrology, people who do science, that in the days of Hezekiah, that is the time, the exact time of Joshua. Signs are for Jews. But it sure brought the Babylonians. And the Babylonians saw the sign, but they came with their wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1, 22, I believe. 21 or 22. But Hezekiah rendered not again. According to the benefit, that's the first time that word shows up. You want benefits? You don't want this benefit. But it's the benefit of God. The presence, the gifts, the healing. And sometimes benefits can ruin us. Done unto him, for his heart was lifted up pride. That's pride. Now how did God... The loving God, the holy God, react to pride. Therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. 
God is not into wrath, and I said it over and over, I mean pride, and being proud, and boasting. And the wrath goes upon the people. Your sin does not affect you only, it affects everyone. Somebody should have walked up to Hezekiah like, like Nathan the prophet said, Thou art the man. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. Now that, that takes luck. That's not something that's often recorded in the Bible. That a man will repent of his pride and get right and get humble. Usually the main downfall of pride is your fault. Now you can get up. Many don't. Another sin that is such a troubling sin upon you, I have seen personally, is alcohol. Alcoholism. And they say it's a disease. No, it's not a disease. It's a sin that grips hold of you. It stays hold of you. And I have dealt with men that are saved and battled it with tears. After their entire family has been destroyed. And the Bible tells us about that alcohol. It's the poison of ads. It's of the devil. And you're not wise. Pride ranks right up there with alcoholism. They're both a sin. And they're both something that God would not do. But thank God he got right. Both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Oh, so we, the people of Jerusalem had pride too. The king carried forth his pride to the people. That's what America is. We're so prideful, Americans are so pride. Look how great we are. Even when we're losers, we're still winners. He and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Wrath was finished. They repented and got right. See how merciful God is. The wrath of God worked to repentance. That's what God does it for you. Why does God cause all these troubles and problems, whatever they be? He's trying to get your attention. No child enjoys his butt whipping, but it's an attention getter. And how you react to that is you can just rebel or you can humble. Hezekiah got humbled. And Hezekiah had exceedingly much riches and honor. And he made himself treasures for silver and for gold. Now, when I read this, 27, 28, I don't think it's the man. Because Jesus said the man that had all this stuff, he said, I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to build greater. And, you know, I'm going to sit at ease and be at relaxed. And God says, thou fool, thy soul will be counted. Now, I don't think that's Hezekiah, but when I read about Hezekiah, like, I know he got right. That's one thing. But the same condition that rich man and Hezekiah here are the same. You know what the difference between Hezekiah and that rich man that Jesus told us about? That rich man stayed in his pride till his death and he never got right. Hezekiah repented and after his repentance, God said, look what he has. And I guarantee you, if Hezekiah is still in the same character that he has been outside of his pride, he gave this to the Lord. He gave this to the people. Silver and gold, precious stones. That's what we're going to get as rewards for Christians. For spices. For shields, that's defense. And all manner of pleasant jewels. Now, I don't know about the spices there. I can't say anything about that. But shield. The Bible speaks about we have the shield of faith. Jewels. Are we not spoken about jewels made up in Daniel? Spice. I don't know. Maybe we get the Lord later. I can't apply that one. Storehouses. I'm going to tear down my bars and I'm going to build bigger. Storehouses. Would be warehouses. Would be these, these uh, uh, what do you call them now? Storage centers you see over the place. He's got so much stuff, he's got to have a garage outside of his garage in the other city to put his stuff in a garage that he has too much for his garage. Back when I grew up as a kid, a garage was for a car. 
You don't know what's in that garage today. Also for the increase of corn. That's good for the people. And wine. He's got a lot of corn. He's got a lot of wheat. A lot of barley. He's got a lot of grapes. A lot of raisins. A lot of wine. Oil. That would be olive oil. He's got plenty of... Look at how God's blessing him. In ores. Gold. Silver. In crops of spices. And in corn. Wow. God is just blessing it, uh, Judah and Jerusalem. And stalls for all manner of beasts. He's got barns for the animals. Horse stalls. I don't know if you put pigs in stalls or cows in stalls. But he's got for all manner of beasts. And coats. That's the first and only time that word shows up for flocks. That's a sheep coat. That's a special pen or building for sheep. And goats, flocks. Man, this guy is into it all. And you would count him as industrious, construction, uh, wholesale, retail, farming tree. No, not farm. Husbandry. I'm trying to make up my own words again. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks, animals, and herds, animals in abundance. For God had given him substance very much. Who gave it to him? God. Who does Hezekiah credit? I got all this. Where did I get it from? God. Now, he's the president right now. You go up to Donald Trump. Donald Trump, where'd you get all this from? I wonder what his answer would be. I don't know. Would you think it'd be God? If you were to ask every 10th person that came out of the church Sunday morning, any church, you count them. Every tenth, every tenth person that came out of church, say, where did you get all your stuff from? Would the answer be God? Hezekiah, king of a nation, throne, royalty, said, God gave it to me. After he fell in pride, he said, that's what God gave me. There's a prayer I like to follow in Proverbs chapter 30. Lord, please don't give me too much that I may get proud and, and not call upon you and and disfame your name and yet lord please don't make me so poor and i have to steal to discredit your name that's a prayer of mine i don't know if i if i had all this riches i don't know what kind of man i would be i would not probably be the man i am today i'd probably be the worst giving god the credit the same hezekiah also stopped the upper water courses of gilhan And brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. So he brought a water cause into the city so we can have fresh water. And Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Because God is with him. Now that's what the prosperity gospel wants. God's working for us for everything. Yeah, but remember last night, the night before when we did our study... He's right. He's doing right. He brought a great revival. And here comes the enemy. Here comes the enemy. How be it. In the business of the ambassadors of the prince of Babylon. They're the star gazers. They're the ones that saw the, the heavens move. And when they saw the heavens move. I forget, I forget how many degrees it was. Either past or present. What? It went back, okay. Time went back. Where is the first place Babylon shows up? Chinese? Polish? Africa? No, the first place they show up, they show up to the God in Jerusalem. Hey, we just saw the heavens move. It was your God. Now, many people say that those wise men that followed that star of Jesus two years old, Many say they were the Babylonians. They could have been. Of Chaldees. I know Babylon was gone, but you know, of the area and of the people that were once the Chaldees, the stargazers. They were one time, they, they're looking up at the sky and they heard prophecy. They heard the Bible and they look up at the sky and say, that star was not there before. It has never been there before. 
They didn't know where they're going. The Bible says they followed that star. So God will use the heavens to get your attention. If it will bring you to Jesus Christ, God, you cannot limit God to everything. I know about, I've heard from a missionary in the Gobi Desert of complete, vast, sandy nothing. And a man was walking through that desert and found a Bible in the middle of that sand in that desert and then found the church that we, we I supported there and he got saved. That's remarkable. So the heavens move. Who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land God left him, Israel. And I, okay, I do have that note here. 10 degrees, 40 minutes, it went back. I do have that note here. It's uh, uh, 2 Kings 20, verse 8. 2 Kings 20, verse 8, and Isaiah 39, 1. Total 40 minutes, and you run that back to Joshua, which I don't have that. In here, Joshua, they say, is about the space of 40 minutes. So here is this thing in the heavens, they run to God of the Bible. Man sees things today, they run to God of science, mathematics. That was done to land. God left him, watch this, to try him. God did tempt Abraham. God's tempting Hezekiah that he might know all that was in his heart. And if you remember from 2 Kings, the Babylonians come, Isaiah shows up, Isaiah says, Hezekiah, who were those men that were here? They were the Babylonians. Oh, really? Okay. What were they here for? Remember that sign that God did? Okay, yep. Yeah. What did they see? They saw everything. Man, I opened up the house to the Lord. I opened up my house. I opened up those treasure cities. I showed them on Isaiah. Guess what? What Isaiah? They took stock in the shopping list of what you wrote, and they're going to come in this city and destroy this city and take everything you accumulated. And then Hezekiah has the words to say, Well, that's okay. As long as it don't happen in my time. How come he didn't pray that time? He prayed when God said, You're going to die. He says, set thy house in order. You're going to die. Oh, Lord God, help me. Your people, your land, it's going to be misery. It's going to be chaos. Jeremiah. Oh, okay. Ain't going to happen my time. Oh, well. It's not the attitude to have. Now, the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness. So he had goodness by the law. Behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and the books of the kings of Judah and Israel, very second kings. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers. And they buried him in the chiefest of the sepulchres of the sons of David. And they gave him a great burial. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did honor him at his death. And Manasseh his son reigned in his stead. Now, when you run the time, we did it before, go back to 2 Kings 20, get that, that video or that audio. The time that God gave extra to Hezekiah instead of killing him, Manasseh has been born in that time. Had Hezekiah died when God told him he was going to die, there would be no Manasseh. Now, the next king, Manasseh, he is going to be the longest reigning king, and he's going to be the most wicked king in Judah. And we'll see how his life goes. 